After just finishing a full playthrough of The Talos Principle, I wanted to come back and give my thoughts. The Talos Principle is made by Crow Team, which you may know as the people that made Serious Sam. So this game is a pretty massive departure from the sorts of games that they typically make. Crow Team also got a couple of outside people to do the writing. They got Tom Jubert, who was involved with FTL and The Swapper, both games I've played and were excellent, and they also got Jonas Karatsis, who was involved with The Sea Will Claim Everything, which I have not played but I've heard it's very good. Despite being a kind of game that's completely different from what Crow Team has normally done, it's actually really, really good. And thanks to the writing talents of Tom Jubert and Jonas Karatsis, the writing is also really good. The game starts with you waking up, and you find yourself inside the body of a robot. And there's a strange voice talking to you, guiding you on, telling you what to do. And there's all of these sigils and strange tools and things to collect and doors to unlock. Some questions quickly come up. Things like, where am I? What am I? What's the point of these puzzles? And what is this voice talking to me and why does this voice want me to solve the puzzles? These kinds of questions become the central mysteries of the game. The basic flow of everything is that you need to complete puzzles to get sigils, and then you use these sigils to gain access to various things. There are a bunch of puzzle hubs that basically have a bunch of doorways that allow you to access mini puzzle worlds that have anywhere between maybe two to five of their own puzzles. So if you complete all of the puzzles in one of these mini puzzle worlds, then at some point you'll hopefully gain enough sigils to go spend it on maybe unlocking another hub, or perhaps unlocking another tool that you need to do more puzzles. Because puzzle progress is somewhat gated, the order in which you complete puzzles is not strictly enforced, so you do have some freedom, but some puzzles do require certain tools, and if you haven't actually gained the sigils and used them to unlock those tools, then you probably won't be able to complete them. And access to the hub worlds themselves are also gated and require certain sigils. The fact that you need sigils to unlock so many different things led me to being kind of addicted to trying to get them, because there's always something to look forward to. There's always sigils that you can use to unlock a, a new tool, or a new hub world, or something like that. Something new to see, something to look forward to and to strive for. But that raises the question, what's the point? I'm solving these puzzles, and I'm gaining sigils to unlock access to new areas that allow me to solve more puzzles. But what's the point? of all of it. That's a question that often comes up for me in puzzle games, because often I just feel like it's kind of pointless. Maybe the puzzles are interesting and well designed in their own right, but I usually need some sort of a greater reason for why I'm doing these things to stay engaged. And the Talos Principle did a great job of doing exactly that. There's a very good reason for everything being the way it is. There's a reason why you're in this world. There's a reason why you're solving these puzzles. And you learn these reasons by various different ways, but the most common way is that you'll find a bunch of computer terminals just strewn throughout the world. And when you log into them, you'll find a bunch of different things on them, but the most common thing to find is a bunch of notes. A bunch of strange, fragmented, partially corrupted notes that are just various different things. Little bits of emails or news articles, things like that. I ended up reading a bunch of these strange and out of context and partially corrupted pieces of information. But as I kept playing and as I kept discovering them, they all just started to really come together. And they just kept bringing the world to life, just little bit by little bit. Through these notes, and various other things that happen that I don't want to spoil, the question arises of consciousness of artificial intelligences. And that is a central question that comes up in this game. It's a central theme, if you will. The question of, can artificial intelligences be truly independent? Can they be a person? Can intelligence be artificially simulated to such a degree that it's not actually artificial? These sorts of questions are explored to a surprising amount of depth through various notes that you find and also interactions that you have with other entities. The exploration of these sorts of topics is something that I find very interesting, and I really wish more things explored them. So on top of wanting to solve puzzles to get sigils to gain access to solving more puzzles, I also wanted to gain access to these computer terminals to learn more about the story. And something that I want to stress because I feel like it's not nearly as common as it should be, is that the story is very much connected to everything else that happens in the game. So it's not one of those games where the story is kind of a, 
a strange thing that's just sprinkled on top and you can kind of ignore it and it doesn't really matter, where it just feels like fluff. The story and the game actually form a coherent whole. But there's actually more than even that that made me want to keep pressing on. And that's to find the various stars that are cleverly hidden around the levels. So these stars are all over the place, usually very well hidden and very hard to access. And the stars are more than just a kind of collectible that you can look at and say, Ooh, look, I ticked off a box. It's more than just that. These stars are actually used to gain access to something in the game. And they're very well hidden. So to find these stars, you have to basically look for ways to kind of break the level. You have to try to think, where could something maybe be hidden? So I would find myself constantly going into puzzle rooms and just thinking to myself, where might they hide something? Maybe there'd be a wall, and it looks like there's a lot of room behind it. And there's no normal way in the puzzle to actually get behind that wall, so I would think, maybe there's something I can jump up on to get behind it, and perhaps there's a star behind it. So there's this constant mind game of looking around the environment for places that they might hide stuff, and trying to think of ways to break the level to get up on geometry that you're not really supposed to normally get up on, and just constantly trying to find ways to break everything in the levels. And it was really fun. And there's more than just stars to find, too. There's also dozens and dozens of Easter eggs. They're just all over the place. Tons of references to Serious Sam, other games, anime, just all sorts of stuff. So when you put it all together, throughout the entirety of the game, I was always excited to play because there was always something to look forward to. I could complete more puzzles to get more sigils, which gives me access to more hub worlds, which gives me access to more puzzles, which gives me access to more terminals, which tells me more about the story that's really fascinating and I loved reading about it, which gives me access to more places to look around for stars and try to break the levels to look for easter eggs, and it's just like a, just a constant onslaught of, there's so much to do and it's so fun. It's one of the very few games where I can say that, towards the end of my 40 plus hour playthrough, I was just about as excited to play it as I was at the beginning. That's a very hard thing to do. When a game is so long, 40 plus hours, it's really hard to keep it fresh. But they actually managed to do exactly that. But that's not to say that the game maintained a consistent quality throughout the whole thing. I have to admit, really my only major complaint about it is that, towards the end, the puzzles do get less interesting. And the reason for that is that the puzzles start to get a bit stagnant. The beginning of the game really doesn't have this problem because it constantly introduces new tools to you at a very high rate. So there's always new mechanics to learn and new interactions to get to grips with. But the further you get in the game, the kind of more spaced out these tools are. And so you end up with long stretches where there's no new tools to work with. And so during these stretches, the puzzles become a bit repetitive really. They tend to become not really about learning new mechanics or learning anything new, but more about kind of just throwing more confusion at your face. Early on, solving a puzzle might involve the use of maybe just one tool and the whole thing is set in a fairly small level. But later on, they often do things like requiring you to solve a puzzle using four tools at the same time, all intermixed. And they throw the whole thing inside of a huge maze full of turrets and mines. Which might be kind of fun and exciting at first, but it quickly becomes obvious that you're not really learning anything new, you're just kind of trying to apply all of your previous skills, but all at the same time. I felt like I was often solving challenges that I had already solved in the past, and that they were just being presented to me in an obfuscated way. Another thing that also really bothered me were the sigil puzzles. So when you get these sigils, and you go to use them to unlock something, you don't just instantly unlock the thing. You have to do a little puzzle where you basically configure these variously shaped sigil puzzle pieces, and you have to find a way to fit all of them inside of a certain shape. I don't think words can do justice to just how much I loathed these puzzles. In the beginning, they weren't too bad, because the actual number of sigils that you had to use for any one of these puzzles was pretty limited. So you could really just use trial and error and probably just solve it in seconds. They were pretty quick. But the further on in the game you get, the more pieces you have to configure into a larger shape. And they get more and more complicated, and in the end, for some of these puzzles, I actually ended up spending about 15 minutes or so just configuring these stupid pieces into these stupid shapes. It was not interesting, it was not fascinating, it has nothing to do with the story, and it just sucked. I hate them, I hate them, I hate them, oh god, I wish there was an option to turn them off. But other than those two things, I really just liked pretty much everything about this game. The graphics are just gorgeous, 
There's a lot of variety in the kinds of environments that you get to visit, and all of them are just beautiful and so well detailed. For any one of them, you can just stop and stare at a tree or stare up at the sky and just listen to the sound of the music and the wind. Which reminds me, the sound design is also wonderful. Every environment has its own particular set of sounds that just perfectly fits it. If you find yourself on a lush island, then you might hear the sounds of the water lapping against the shore, the wind, birds. You can really just close your eyes and picture everything. So, without getting into any major spoilers, I think that's about all I can say. It's a beautiful looking and sounding game, with a really fascinating story that's well integrated with the rest of it. The puzzles are generally very good, and anytime they're not, there was always something else that would keep propelling me forwards and make me want to continue. It was a really engaging experience. I just always wanted to come back to solve another puzzle, or find another terminal and learn more about the story, or try to break another level to find some weird solution that they never intended. It was just a really great experience and one of the most enjoyable games I have ever played. If you'd like to play the Talos Principle for yourself, you can get it from various different places, and I'll have links to all of that in the description. Thank you for watching.